good afternoon. I'm going to talk about establishing a new fertility centre, Cambridge IVF, and investing in the laboratory technology. We started off several years ago um, and designed and built a purpose-built, purpose um, state-of-the-art IVF unit linked to Addenbrooke's, the main NHS hospital in Cambridge, but away off-site, so we've obviously maintained all the links. And it was designed and built to our spec, and right from the start we've been working select with selected third parties in partnership. And our aim was really to provide a comprehensive range of treatments, and we hope as we grow they will also grow and to become a clinical um, centre of research and excellence. Um, several years ago, there were lots of people sitting around the drawing board wondering where to start, uh, lots of advice, not much experience, and it was at this point when Steve decided that there was a, a need for a new book on the market, um, and I think it would be a top seller. The project can be broken down into three key phases. We've got the, the first phase where all the planning, designing, and um, right from the start, we brought a, a validation company in to do our validation of the design. Um, they worked closely with us through the construction phase. This was um, constructing, equipping, and then validating um, our lab. And the final phase was obviously inspection, um, validating all our processes before we could actually commence treatment. This is what uh, the drawing board looked like. So about five years, Stephen was sitting around and trying to work out how to design a new unit. We wanted to build it um, with a cube design with the lab fairly central um, and this was so it could be a clean room suite um, with links off to all the main procedure areas, the cryo store, our clean room store um, and what he was trying to do is work out um, the best way to maintain validate um, personnel flow um, and keep process flow. So the, the green areas um, demonstrate patient areas, the red areas are staff areas, and there's obviously some overlap between um, patients and staff in the theatre, two theatre rooms. When he was doing the designing, um, Steve obviously was um, looking to maintain a cleaning environment, and this was through the use of doors where necessary um, for personnel flow, but also these are the blue arrows. Um, he was also looking to maintain uh, process flow uh, without interrupting personnel flow with the use of hatches. And one example of this, they're annotated in the yellow arrows, um, would be a large hatch from the lab through to the clean room store, and this was for the introduction of lab consumables. But also smaller hatches, so we can actually link up for example, the cryo store area through to the lab, and this was for the introduction when we needed to vitrify with the smart box, we could pass it through quite easily, um, containing the liquid nitrogen already. Also key in the design was um, to design in doors through to the theatre areas that actually have hatches within them. An example of this is to allow egg collections, embryo transfers to take place without the need for opening doors, people walking in and out. And this is to try and maintain a consistent environment within the lab and allow the processes to flow smoothly. So environmental control has always been um, top of the agenda for us as we believe that it's um, key to a successful culture environment. Um, we have independent monitoring, you're probably familiar with these, um, pH probes, thermocouples, and we do snapshot monitoring every two months to maintain, um, make sure we have maintained um, temperature and pHs, but we also have a system in place um, with continuous monitoring. So an example of this would be um, in our minks, we have independent probes that are directly hardwired into a central computer, and this is allow us to allow us to monitor um, critical temperatures continuously. And if there's any other problems, fluctuations, we are linked into a, a delightful on-call phone that wakes us up at all hours. Um, also key, right from the start, we've been working with selected partners um, for our validation process, processes, for all our products, consumables, and because obviously we're NHS, we're looking for value for money, but we're also looking for um, value-added services. 
Um, so you've got to like the products, be confident, um, but obviously um, make the most of what we can. And Future Life, um, when we were setting up, when we were tendering for the um, contract for Culture Media, um, somewhere in the room lurking was this young man, and he actually came into the lab for two days to help us go through all our dry runs, tweak our protocols, processes, make sure that we were working closely with Future Life, but in a way that we were happy with. So for us, that was an absolutely invaluable service. Um, commencing treatment. Um, this was a, a big day for us, but we were very happy with how things have gone so far. We've chosen right from the start um, consumables and media that we've liked for quality and results. And our aim was also to minimise, when we're working, minimise the exposure of our gametes and embryos um, outside the incubator. So following fertilisation checks on day one, we don't then reassess the embryos until day three. At that point, make a decision on whether we're going to do a day three transfer or culture on to day five and do a blastocyst transfer. We have a commitment for all our patients, if we can, to offer them a day five single blastocyst transfer. But obviously for some patients with very few embryos, um, we do opt to do a day three. We have a quite a robust vitrification system. We vitrify on day five or six, and this is following laser collapse, um, and we use the vitrolife system. And also very important for us is to keep our patients informed right the way through um, phone calls to let them know how things are going, keep them informed and involved in their treatments. So we've been using Vitrolife now and it's, we're very confident with our results. Uh, we like the system. Um, we've also attended workshops with Vitrolife and we feel for us um, that's really useful for keeping abreast with all their new products and for using them according to protocol. Uh, put up some results. So average age, number of embryos, multiple pregnancy rates, all pretty pleasing so far. We're still struggling with the 43 and overs, um, but for the rest of our age groups, you can see broken down, um, we are pretty happy. We vitrify, as I've said, on day five or six. We vitrify blastocysts, and this is following laser collapse. We store them individually in the um, rapid eye device, um, and we use the vitrify protocols, the kits, and to date, our results, again, very pleasing. Still struggling with the forever 43 and over challenging group, but the other, the other groups broken down into age we are very happy with. And looking forward, um, we've currently got a PrimVision unit on trial, so we can use it within our current system. We've got it situated in a, um, a small uh, multi-gas incubator. We've been splitting the patient's embryos between our mink and our sanyo, and we've found to date the results have been very good. It's only on trial, um, but we found that for patients with um, poor prognosis or that have had unexpectedly bad cycles already, the reassurance of being able to give them information on a daily basis has been um, really appreciated. So looking forward to embracing new technology, we're hoping that we can actually offer this um, to um, more of our patients and um, move forward like that. Thank you for your attention.